Hey there, I'm Tristan and I am hitting the Appalachian Trail in just a few weeks to start my 2023 through hike. And today I want to share with you some of the gear that I am taking with me. So first, just to make it easy for myself, we're going to start out with what I'm wearing on the trail. Um, I'm wearing my glasses, obviously. There's something special about them, but I'll show you that a little bit later. I have my Garmin watch. I'm a runner, so I like to wear it. Um, my road ID for those people who aren't runners. Um, or don't have one of these, it's kind of like a medical bracelet, but not specifically for medical reasons, but basically if you have to go um, somewhere, or if you're in an ambulance, it has your emergency contacts on it, which I think is super important. So it has like my mom's phone number, my sister's phone number, um, so that people can get in, in contact with them if, if something were to happen. That's what I'm wearing right now. And then what I'm wearing on the trail is I have my Get Sprints hat. It has little flying pigs on it and it was modified especially by my mom's because I like to wear high ponies or high braids and so this lets me have that my hair off my neck for when it gets hot and I get super sweaty. I have a merino wool bra from Branwin. Again I sweat a lot and so when that sweat season hits I want it to be damp and then be cold at night. So I have that to wear. I have my jolly gear Wicked Weeds shirt. If y'all have not heard of Jolly Gear, they're the bomb. I, I'm i obviously super pale, so I get sunburned all the time. And so I used to be obsessed with Columbia shirts until I found Jolly Gear. And the patterns were amazing. They have thumb holes, they have hoods with ponytail holes. They're the best, love them. What I dropped, I have some Njinji socks. I'm gonna switch them out with some darn tough socks. Um, I ran my first marathon a few months ago and I had lots of fun with some blisters and I know that these are really good for blister prevention and I've worn them on and they seem to help. So I'm going to take a pair of these. I'm wearing ex officio underwear. I know some people just go without, but for now, this is what we're rocking. And then to start with, it's supposed to be a little chilly. So I am wearing Athleta, I think they're called Polar Tech. Um, it's in my lighter pack, which I will link below, which the specific name is, but it's like Altitude Polar Tech. They have some fleece lining in them and they're cozy and warm. So that is what I will be wearing to start out with. And then we have my fanny pack. This is a Patagonia Black Hole. It's, it's smaller, but it fits everything and it's super nice. So we'll go through that. So first up, the special thing that I was talking about with my glasses. So these glasses, I was influenced by TikTok. <laughs> but they're from Pear Eyewear and the sunglass topper is just magnet on so I don't have to carry separate sunglasses or anything like that. I can just have one easy thing. And so I love that. Super excited about that. I am taking a pair of corded iPhone headphones, a knife, just a simple knife. have some snacks already in here for day one. This is actually my water bottle holder, which will go on the outside of my pack. I just need to connect it to it, but I put it in my fanny pack, make sure I have it. Pepper spray, just in case. Lip balm, face sunscreen, but I can use it other places too. I, again, I mentioned that I'm super pale, so sunscreen is important for me. And then my, this is my Petzl Optic Core Headlamp. I love it, I've had it for a few years. It has a rechargeable battery in it. It's been great. And then I just have a little plastic baggie for my phone or for trash or for anything else that I might need it for. So that is everything that I'm wearing. Oh, except for my trekking poles. So I have the Gossamer Gear LT5 trekking poles. Um, they are amazing. They are super lightweight and they work really well. They're super comfy and I'm really happy with them and I'm excited to take them on the trail. So, the most important piece of gear, my hiking boots. Yeah, like I said, I'm a runner and I used to have a lot of issues with the balls of my feet. And so when I went to the running store, somebody recommended Hoka's and I, I'm wearing Hoka's right now on my feet. <laughs> And so 
they were the only shoes that didn't hurt the balls of my feet when I ran. And so when I saw that Hike Hoka came out with hiking boots, I immediately went and tried them out and I love them. I know a lot of people use trail runners. I'm not for the beginning at least. I love these. I roll my ankles a lot, so I like the higher ankle. So we're gonna go with them for now, but I love them. So that's it for what I'm wearing. Um, so we will get started digging into the pack. This is the only thing that's not inside the pack that should be, it is a food cozy. My sister had this cute little mustache windshield protector that she didn't want to use anymore and she donated to me to make a food cozy out of it. So basically it just keeps my food reheating once I pour the water in the baggie. It's got little Velcros. So that's super cute. Alright, so this is the pack. If you've watched some of my little short videos, you'll know that I've had some pack issues, but this is the final pack that is coming with me. It is the newest Osprey Asia. I had an Asia previously. It had some frame issues. I then had tried a Mariposa. I got some Regan Mariposa and I really, really liked it. Unfortunately, there were just a few things that with the way my body is configured, it just didn't work out for me. But I do think it's a great lightweight pack. So I went back to the Asia in a, just in a different New Year's style. And so far I'm really loving it. So I think it'll be great. So as I mentioned before, I need to attach this water pocket onto my water bottle. So here's the smart water bottle that will be going with it. Um, it has the fancy sport cap. All right, and so we are gonna go through the outside first and then we'll dig into the inside. So on the outside of my pack, I have my Kula cloth which is a pea cloth. This is one that I designed myself. You can do custom designs. And it is on the outsides for easy access. In the one pocket I have, I'm an artist, so I am taking a little mini kit of my watercolor art supplies. In here is a mini little watercolor booklet, my Appalachian Trail passport. I love collecting stamps and I realize that might be a waste of weight for some people, but I know that when there's little stamps available, I'm gonna wanna collect them. So I am taking that. This is my watercolor palette. I have a water brush, a micron pen, and a pencil. Um, so it is a little bit extra weight, but for me, I think it's gonna be worth it. And if not, I will just ship it home. Rain pants. These are just some bad boys that I bought off Amazon. They seem to work well, so they'll be coming along. Those darn tough socks I mentioned, I'm gonna switch these out with the Njinji socks during the day if my feet start to get too sweaty, just to help prevent those blisters. Um, but I do love darn tough because they have a lifetime guarantee with their socks. So anytime you wear a hole into them, they give you a new pair. Also, I just wanna mention that none of this gear is sponsored. So anything that I'm saying that's really positive about anything, it's just all my own opinion. And I just really love this gear that I've already used before I hit the trail. So darn tough is a great pair of socks. I have some outdoor research gloves. They're really warm. I have tested them out on a few shakedown hikes. They do have a little bit of an issue when they get wet because they're not waterproof. And so to combat that, I went for a little cheap hack um, because all the rain mittens were super, all oh, they were super lightweight. They were super expensive and I just couldn't, couldn't validate it. So I went to my local Walmart and for about $3, I got some latex kitchen gloves. <laughs> so I, when it rains, at least for the winter, I will be hitting the trail in my latex gloves over my other gloves just to keep my hands dry. And they're a little bit heavier than some of the rain mittens, but for $3, I don't think you can beat this. I also have my Carhartt beanie. I wear Carhartts like every day in the winter up in the Western North Carolina mountains where I live. I like the blaze orange, especially because I'll be in the wood. People, I'll be easy to spot, easy to find, and I just love these hats. And lastly, in this pocket, I have a little rain poncho. I tried the pack cover for my pack, and though I liked it, I thought that the rain was going to leak down my back, so I just thought a poncho would cover both me and my pack, and it would be really useful, and it's super lightweight. So that's that pocket. In the front pocket, I have my camp shoes. These are the Hoka Aura Recovery Shoes. They, 
I love Crocs, don't get me wrong. But these are super cushiony and cozy and I just think that my feet will absolutely love me for these. And I think that they're just a little bit lighter weight than Crocs. Not much, but they're definitely a little bit more comfortable on your arches um, than Crocs. This is my water thing. This is my little water ditty bag. The little ditty bag is from Granite Gear. It's super lightweight. But my Sawyer, I love this. I've used it a bunch. I think the flow rate's great. I'm pretty sure everybody pronounces this Canock. Um, I have a Canock water bladder. I think it's great. I think it's it's really held up really well. I've taken it on a few trips and it helps me get a bunch of water and squeeze it through my Sawyer. And I also have an extra O-ring in my first aid kit. Another Granite Gear ditty bag. I have all of my toiletries. So in this, I have some baggies just for trash so that I can pack that out. Toilet paper. I have some wipes. I just think they're a little bit easier for some of the business. These are just candy liners for that time of the month, just in case there's a light day. This does, it just fits better in here, but it's not necessarily bathroom related, but it's my hairbrush. I also have a menstrual cup, which I will use, be using to deal with my period on trail. It is a salt menstrual cup and it's worked really great. And I just think that this will be a lot easier than having to deal with packing out tampons or pads on the trail. So for ladies, I think, or anyone who has a period, I think this is a great option. Hand sanitizer, very important. I also will be getting some Dr. Bronner's soap, just to make sure my hands are clean. And then lastly, I have a deuce trowel, which is super lightweight. Also in the front, I have my tent footprint. It is just some Tyvek from Six Moon Designs. I know it's a little bit heavier than the Poly Cryo, but it's a little bit more durable. And that's important to me because I want to make sure my tent makes it to Maine with me. <laughs> okay, on the other pocket, my tent poles and tent stakes. Um, I'll get to what tent I have when I get inside, but these are tent poles and tent stakes. And then I have that other smart water bottle. On the other side of my pack, I just have another carabiner. I just feel like I will need to clip something to it. And so I like to have extra carabiners. They're, they weigh, they're plastic, they weigh like nothing. So it's totally easy to pack, to put on there. All right, so first up in the pack, I have my fleece. This is a Melanzana microgrid. I was one of the lucky people um, that during COVID, I won their little lottery for ordering one online, which was super exciting because I had never been to Leadville, Colorado. I hope to go at some point in the future, but I was super excited to get one of these. I love it, it's super cozy, and I love the colors. So, and I love fleece. Next up is my tent. This is the REI Quarter Dome One. It is a few years old. I bought it back in 2018, but it's still a super, uh, lightweight and great tent. I did have a little bit of a trouble with the poles and um, got to do a, had a little bit of fun with those. I got to record them a few days ago. But it's still a great tent and it's lightweight and I think it'll serve me great on the trip. Next up is my rain jacket. I know everyone uses frog togs. I touched them and tested them out and I just couldn't get over the way they feel. They're kind of chalky and I just didn't want to have to repair them the first time I snagged a branch. So I'm going with the Patagonia Torrent Shell. It is a little bit heavier, but I think it's just a little bit more higher quality. And I want to be able to use this after the trail, if I'm being completely honest. So it was worth a little bit more money to be able to continue to use it afterwards. And it just, I think it's a great rain jacket. So this is coming with me. And this might go back home after winter, since I do also have the rain poncho, because I do want to use this for rain and wind. And then I may bring it back when I get closer up north. Um, but yeah, love this. Next up is my cook stove. I have the Tokes 750. I think it's just big enough for everything I need and a little bit extra if I want. And inside of it, I have a bandana, which inside of that bandana, just so that my 
cup, my mug does not get scratched. I have my BRS stove. It's super lightweight. I've used it on a bunch of camping trips and I've never had any issues with it. I can get it out of the little bag. Super lightweight, super little dude. And my little fuel canister fits perfectly in there and I can just slide it right in with the bandana. And I can also use the bandana if I wanna like wipe out my pot or for any other things, but mainly right now it's used to make sure my pot stays nice and not scratched up. Next up is my first aid kit. I don't know if I wanna pull everything out of here because there's a lot in here, but again, everything individually listed is in my lighter pack. Um, but some of the things that are in here is my lighter is in here for my food. I have some allergy things, um, spring, springtime and pollen, and I don't get along. I love springtime, but me and pollen and my nose don't get along. So I have some I am packing some Flonase, some Zyrtec. I have some multivitamins and supplements in here. I am taking some CBD for those first few weeks in case I have trouble sleeping. I do sometimes have trouble sleeping and that does seem to help me a lot. Uh, I also have a few other first aid things, band-aids. I have KT tape, I have Luco tape, I have Moleskin, because as I mentioned, Blisters and I are, are good friends, unfortunately. And yeah, so that is the first aid kit. Again, there's a lot in here. I would rather have more than I need than not enough, at least for a first little bit. Electronics, small little baggie. I will be taking my phone, which is what this video is being recorded on, but it's an iPhone 13. I have an anchor power cord or power bank. It's 20,000 megahertz, I think. But again, it's in my later pack, the exact one that I have. I have a wall outlet that has a few different holes for charging different things. All my cords, all my sleep wrapped up. I have a cord for my Garmin, a cord for my headlamp, and then I have cords for my phone. I think that's it. And the power bank, obviously. And then inside that bag, I just have some little charcoal and I have a little silica gel packet that I'm gonna put in there just to make sure everything stays dry. And this little pouch is from Hartford Gear Co. It just seemed a little bit more water resistant than my Granite Gear ones. Love those, but this one just seems like it keep out water better and I wanna make sure my power bank stays dry. Other electronics, just while we're on electronics, is my Garmin InReach, which will stay on the outside of my pack. And then I have this little towel, which is not electronic, but it's on the outside. So those two are there. But a very important electronic to make sure that I can text home and let my mom and sister know that I am A-OK. -okay. And if shit really hits the fan, that I can press that SOS button. So hopefully I won't need it for that, but it's there in case I need it. Okay, let's go with all my kitchen stuff. This is a very, very lightweight tablespoon. I am taking some, like I said, some supplements and some protein powder just to make sure I stay healthy and feeling good out on the trail. So I have this super lightweight tablespoon to help me with that. And then this is my Sea to Summit Long Alpha Spoon that'll help me get down deep into the bottom of those bags so I can make sure I get every last drop of food. My Puffy is the Mountain Hardware Ghost Whisperer. There is a different Mountain Hardware jacket that I have that is, I couldn't even tell you the name of it. I think it was like a gorilla jacket or something. It's really furry and I've probably had it since middle school and I'm now 26 and I have worn that jacket since then and it still holds up. So I love Mountain Hardware and I am taking this down. It's super lightweight, it's super cozy and it'll remind me of that jacket that I love so much even though it's completely different style. And I also got one with the hood. My ears get really cold so I know that I will appreciate the hood if it gets a little chilly. All right, next up, the biggest, heaviest thing in my pack, <laughs> my food and my bear canister. I know that there's a lot of debate on food bags or bear canisters. I am going with the bear canister for a multitude of reasons. This is what I've used on all my trips. I feel confident in using it. I feel good about it. It doubles as a stool. And also I just really love and respect the wildlife. And I wanna make sure 
that I am trying to protect the bears as much as possible. I know bear that bears have, have kind of learned sometimes with some of these two, some of the really smart ones, but right now I'm sticking with this and hopefully it's gonna be good. And to, I've also added some, some lovely reflector strips to it to make sure I can find it. And I've also personalized it with some of my favorite stickers so that I know which one's mine out on the trail. And also just a lot of these stickers are from where I live. And so they are kind of like bringing a little bit of home with me too. Um, I will do a separate food video of all my food that I'm taking for the first few days and what's everything that's in this bear canister. And also this is the Bear Vault 450 slash Bear Vault 500. So if it's about four to five days of food and I think it's a really perfect size to be able to put in your backpack sideways. So, bear canister. So this little fun doohickey I found on Amazon, I think it was called the Elon like travel pillow. And I was trying to kind of look for things that could do two different things at once. And so this doubles as a stuff sack and a pillow. So the fun thing is, is when it's this side, it is waterproof. And then when on the other side, besides that it stores clothes, it is fuzzy. And so you just stuff the clothes in the other way and then you sleep on it as a pillow. So what's in here is my other clothes. For warmer weather, I have Patagonia baggies. I love these, they're water resistant, they're super comfy, and they have pockets, which is the best thing. I have more ex officio underwear. These are my sleep socks, they are smart wool. For hiking, I really love my Darn Tough and a Gingy, but these smart wool socks are just really thick and warm, and I know that my, like, my hands get really cold, my feet also get really cold, so these will keep my feet nice and cozy. I have a smart wool base layer quarter zip. I like that if I start to get too hot, I can unzip it a little bit and get some air. And I just like the fun pattern. And for other sleepwear, I have still smart wool base layer fun patterns. I know they're different patterns, but I just liked that it was, they were both fun patterns. And this is like, I think they're 250 base layer merino wool. And then, like I said, this is just reverses and it becomes a pillow. And I think that, that will be a great double use. My sleeping pad is the Nemo Tensor. I am a side sleeper and this is really great because I, so I really wanted one of those like accordion style foam pads, but I was basically told that since I was a side sleeper that I would basically be sleeping on rocks so that I needed an inflatable one. So even though it's a little bit heavier, this will be a little bit more comfortable for me because I'm a side sleeper and it's pretty lightweight. So really like it. This is my Sea to Summit liner. It will just add a little bit more warmth on those really, really chilly nights. We've had a little bit of a false spring and so it has been a little bit warmer during the day and it has, some nights have been a little warmer, but I think it's about to chill back down. So I'm taking this to just make sure I am nice and cozy and warm at night. Lastly, I have one of the most important pieces of gear. I have my sleeping quilt. It is in an event waterproof Sea to Summit little compression sack. And this will keep it nice and warm, or nice, not nice, it won't keep it warm. It'll keep it nice and dry and compressed. And my sleeping quilt, I'm not gonna take all of it out just because it's nice and compressed right now. But it is an enlightened equipment enigma, which means that the foot box is closed. Like I said, I get really cold, my feet and hands get really cold, and so that closed foot box will make sure that my feet stay warm. And as I also mentioned, I am a side sleeper, so quilts just work a little bit better for me. They're also a little bit lighter weight, and so I will be taking my enlightened equipment quilt. And I really love it, and it's super warm. And I'll also be taking the straps with me to make sure they're nice and attached to my sleeping pad. This is everything. This is everything I will be taking on my 2023 adventure down the Appalachian Trail. I am super, super excited. I know that some of this will probably be sent home or it'll be switched out, 
but this is what I'm taking for the start of my adventure and I am super excited. However, if you have any recommendations or comments, please share them below. I would love to hear any recommendations to make things a little bit lighter and see if you hear your thoughts on my gear. If you like it, if you don't like it, um, I'd love to hear it all. If you haven't already, please like this video and subscribe to my channel so that you can follow all the rest of my adventures from Georgia to Maine. I can't wait to catch up with you again soon out on the trail. Happy trails.